Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be doing the latest Reddit challenge. The plan is to take three Kerbals into orbit using a single stage to orbit vehicle. Uh, no staging is allowed at any time, well, except for that, but uh, I think I could probably get away with that. If not, I'll refly it, but seriously, I'm not feeling particularly well. Um, <laughs> and so this is why you're only getting a uh, very simple video. And we're going to run most of this at yeah, four times normal speed. So it's a standard uh, standard plan here is three turbojets. We have nine air intakes. Actually, I think we have more than nine. We have um, we have eleven, and we're feeding those into those three engines. So we're going to take off, get to about twenty kilometers, and then go sideways to pick up as much speed as possible. Now uh, I'm not feeling particularly well, but uh, I did make this before I got sick, so uh, this is what we're getting. Uh, I also wanted to do another one of my Deep Space Network videos, so I'm just going to kind of talk about the stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm just barely managing to stay awake right now, but uh, uh, my enthusiasm is not dampened in any way. So uh, awesome news this week, Gravity, the movie, uh, came out and it broke box office records for uh, movies opening in December, uh, in October in the US. I have not seen it yet because I've been sick and because of Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, but it still looks amazing and people seem to quite like it. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who was tweeting out its flaws, said he enjoyed the movie. So please, yes, we know that there's no way to make a plane change from the Hubble Space Telescope to the ISS. It's a movie. Enjoy the awesome views. View it on the biggest IMAX screen you can. Um, other news, Higgs boson. Yes, uh, so Peter Higgs and uh, Mr. I forget, Francois Englert, they both won the Nobel Prize for Physics for their work in developing the Higgs field. Now, of course, once we get up to speed, we're now traveling about uh, 1,300, 1,400 meters per second. We fire up those nuclear engines and in a moment we are going to fall below the threshold for intake air so we will kill two of the side turbojets those will that that means that the only remaining turbojet will be the one in the middle if we have the ones on the side still running there's a chance they can flame out there we go so now we're relying on just the single one in the middle and when that flames out it won't be a problem because it won't be asymmetric so we're trying to get some altitude now. Uh, we actually, our velocity is slowing down, but we are gaining height, so that's you know, not such a problem. Um, so as we proceed into orbit, let's uh, talk about other things that we're going on. Lady, uh, the, if you remember the one that the lunar atmosphere environment detector, I don't know, it, it's finally got to the moon. In the midst of government shutdown, there hasn't been a big press release or whatever, but it has actually got there because you know, at least somebody was flying that. Government shutdown still continues. Um, there may be some stories about uh, loss of critical data that's actually costing more money because people are shutting down random things. This is bad, please fix it. Draconid's meteor shower was um, is going on right now. If you step outside, you might see some uh, a few more meteorites than usual, of course, emanating from the constellation of Draconis. Um, Really, the peak was last night, but you will see uh, an elevated number tonight as well. So, there, I think, have we... Yes, look, that's the engine finally died. So now we are heading into orbit using the nuclear engines only. We do not have much thrust on these things, but we have enough thrust that we are able to get into orbit. You see, our orbital velocity is about 1,800. Once you get above... You know, 1600 meters per second or thereabouts, gravity starts to drop off, or the force of gravity with respect to the uh, curvature of the planet, or the centrifugal force, and whatever, uh, they start to get close to balancing out, and it becomes easier and easier once you get up to that speed. And uh, so there I am, I get up to like 2200, whatever, meters per second, and more or less get myself into orbit. And then the moon just turns up, so I'm like, ah, might as well just continue on towards the moon, because easy mode was getting into orbit, hard mode was getting to the moon and landing on it. So I made this thing big enough that I figured that I would be able to go to the moon if I have enough fuel. I don't actually know. This is my first attempt. You notice um, that I'm using the the fuselage on the sides. That uh, has better, better mass and better fuel content, so it's 
much better option when you're carrying airplane fuel. And there we go. We got ourselves an encounter with the moon. Let us just make some corrections and head out that way. So, uh, yeah, other other news as we are departing, as we are going up, uh, Bitcoin is going down. Bitcoin uh, suffered a terrible blow this week because Silk Road was... Uh, the the maintainer of Silk Road was arrested. Silk Road was a an online marketplace that dealt with items like drugs and hitmen. Um, yes, but you could supposedly buy this for Bitcoin, and when, when it was taken away, Bitcoin value dropped by 20%. So um, that may indicate what the most of the use of Bitcoin was related to. I'm not going to make any judgments, but... Uh, Cryptocurrency, uh, I'd rather have my regular currency right now. They're both equally invalid, but at least one doesn't have... <laughs> at least one is is useful in corner shops and uh, bars. Um, uh, another note, uh, Juno, the, the spacecraft, the space probe that is going to Jupiter, is flying past Earth as we speak right now, and amateur radio uh, fans, amateur ham radio people, are trying to send Morse code signals to it to help calibrate some of its instruments. So uh, if you're involved with that, my uh, congratulations to you. It's one of these things I've never quite had a chance to get into, but uh, yeah, if you are if you're doing that, uh, I really would like to know what's going on there. And we're now getting ourselves down into a low encounter. And of course, I mess up my situation by... I mess up my node by accidentally deleting it. Now we're going to go in for the landing. We're going to kill our velocity and that will bring us down. And, you know, the plan, of course, as always, is to skim across the surface low and fast. You want to be going sideways as fast as possible. Uh, as low as possible before you actually kill your velocity. That way, your vertical fall is as low as possible, as short as possible, and therefore you waste the least amount of fuel killing it. That is the. If if the moon was perfectly spherical, you would be able to do this. It's actually quite easy to do in Minmus. It's a lot harder to do in the moon when you know what looks like a nice low altitude trajectory is in fact going to take you into a mountainside. So yes, we're going to continue down onto the surface. Um, okay, so continuing with the news, which may or may not be interesting to you at this time. Uh, ESA has started testing a potential Mars rover in the, the mountains of Chile, up in the Andes. High altitude, uh, arid areas. They are supposedly aiming to get a rover to Mars for 2018. It would be really nice if they did, because the Americans have been stealing all the glory and all that. It'd be really nice if the Russians would actually have a successful Mars probe at some point as well. I feel really, I feel really bad every time I see, read about the history of Mars exploration, and you just see all the, the unfortunate um, problems that have befallen a Russian and Soviet attempts to send probes to Mars. Um, speaking of unfortunate stuff, uh, there was a very high profile fire in a Tesla Model S, which uh, managed to knock a bunch of value off the price of Tesla stock. However, uh, I am, qu well, Elon Musk and me, I'm quick to point out that uh, the rate of fires in these cars is still below the rate of fires in good old fashioned uh, internal combustion engines. As I pointed out, it's a good thing we have this non-flammable uh, gasoline as an alternative to electricity, huh? Uh, we're still enjoying our electric car. We've managed to drive it for a week and a half and haven't touched the engine in it at all, the gasoline engine. And as we reach this terminal approach, we shall switch over to my live audio. Okay, so we're just hoping to get down here. Um, so I think I'm going to have enough fuel. I am kind of starting to run low here, but uh, that's okay because I don't actually need to keep everything on this spacecraft for the return. All the same, it'd be nice if I could bring the whole thing back to the planet Kerbin with uh, just what I've got here. Uh, just balance things down. I'm kind of concerned that I don't have a huge number of struts holding this thing together, so trying to be as gentle as possible here and 
Bingo! On the ground, all three Kerbins. All three Kerbins on the surface. That is hard mode. Well, they still have to get home, but okay, let's try and get out. We have to get out and explore this. Come on, Bill. Oh, crap. Hatch is obstructed. Um, Bob, I choose you. Yes, Bob, you can get out. Look, there's plenty of room in there. Look, he's totally climbing down. How is the hatch obstructed? Ah, never mind. Jebediah is just going to sit back. He's worked so hard for this during the flying. He did all the flying, obviously, because Jebediah is the boss. They would not trust these guys to actually fly such a complicated vehicle. Actually, I think it's a pretty lame attempt at a single stage to orbit, but I did want to do the challenge as quickly as possible. Okay, single stage. No, oh, single stage. Yes, let's go. We kept them all bolted on. Hey, hey. And we succeeded. Now we just have to get home and hopefully we won't run out of fuel because then it would be really embarrassing if we ran out of fuel. It would also be really embarrassing if I can't get back on. But I think I should be able to get in. Come on. Yes. Look, he's totally si He could totally have got out there. Ah, damn collision meshes. Never work quite the way you expect them. Okay, quick checklist. Actually, no, we don't have Jebediah in this one. I thought it would be the three of them. Ah, uh, yes, we have some other imposter. I guess Jebediah is off doing some important mission or something, right? Okay, so we're going to head eastwards. There is the planet Kerbin hanging on the horizon. We don't even need to do a complete orbit, just, uh, you know, get in a ballistic arc and then fire into our escape trajectory at peak. And now we're on our way home. Let's go back to the news that I've been trying to cover. So, uh, over at EVE Online, there has been somewhat... Uh, there, the community has been somewhat angry right now because uh, it turns out the developers have been giving out Ishikone Watch Scorpions, which is a very rare ship, uh, only available by being gifted by a developer at this time. And uh, they've been giving them to the people that work at Somer Blink, which is a, a gambling site, which is probably the most the richest entity in EVE Online history. Yes, even richer than me, I know. Uh, just kidding. Um, but there's somewhat... Uh, there's a certain amount of anger over giving these things to a, a community that already has a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, part of the problem is that they were instructed to keep these things somewhat secret, so uh, that made things seem a little more... Um, a little less on the level, let's say. The, the leaked email specifically said keep this somewhat on the DL. So uh, we'll see how that happens. I think it's a storm in a teacup, but it's always worth watching the drama over at EVE Online. Now, uh, Star Citizen is also one to watch. In the next 24 hours, they're going to start celebrating their 10th anniversary for their uh, crowdfunding campaign. And they're going to have a special live stream and no doubt a whole bunch of special offers for spacecraft that you can only get during a limited period and spend money on it and make more money and etc, etc. Um, if you're going to do this, if you need life L uh, LTI laundering, you better make sure you get in on it early because, you know, they're only going to be limited. Okay, so we're finally coming in for the landing here and... See, what I tried to do here was use the jet engines to slow the descent enough so that when the parachutes opened, they wouldn't uh, put too much force on the spacecraft. You see, originally I had just intended to return the crew compartment because the challenge didn't require me to bring the whole spacecraft back, but I thought, what the hell, let's do it. The problem is that meant there was only two parachutes attached and only one decoupler in there holding everything together, and I was afraid the whole thing would disintegrate under the force. So, thankfully, it opened just fine. And uh, although it hit the ground at about 10 meters per second, it all stuck together. And uh, yeah, challenge complete. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. And one last special piece of news. Kerbal Space Program Point Two Two has finally entered the testing phase. And I have this special preview to show you right now. Check out that awesome title screen with point two two in the bottom right corner. Yes, expect science, research, technology and more exploding Kerbals when it's finally released.